everybody my name is Sage and before I start off this video I want to give a special thanks to each and every subscriber. I didn't think my first video would get more than 200 views. I went to sleep with 28 views and 3 subscribers and woke up with over 200 subscribers and thousands of views. So I want to thank each and every one of you. I truly appreciate you all. I also want to give a heavy trigger warning for this video. This involves minors as well as heavy topics including sexual assault and child pornography. Viewer discretion is advice. This is the third episode of Who Do You Trust, where we cover cases where the victims knew and trusted their killers. Today we'll be heading to Anchorage, Alaska. We'll dive into the horrific case of Cynthia C.C. Hoffman. This case revolves around deception, murder, and a promise of $9 million. Let's get into it. Cynthia C.C. Hoffman was a teen living in Alaska, living a pretty normal life. She graduated high school in 2018 and was working as a hostess at a local Denny's. Just like any other teen, she enjoyed shopping and hanging out with her friends. The only thing that separated Cynthia from the other teens was that she had a developmental delay that caused her function on the 7th grade level. But that never stopped her and she overcame a lot of adversities and at the end of the day she just wanted to have friends more than anything. One of her close friends was a girl named Denali Bremer. The two girls met through school and had a close bond. They would even upload pictures on Instagram with captions calling each other best friends. On June 2nd, 2019 is when everything would change. Denali and a friend named Kaden McIntosh picked Cynthia up and they rode around allegedly smoking marijuana while heading to Thunderbird Falls so they could go hiking. The group started hiking on the trail and eventually went off the path and walked to a secluded area along the bank of the river. Denali and Kaden came up with the idea that everyone would duct tape each other as a prank and take pictures. Cynthia was all for it and she was the first up to be duct taped. It didn't take long for Cynthia to realize that something was wrong. She started screaming and saying that she was going to call the police. Her hands and feet were bound with duct tape and they also put some around her head covering her mouth. Denali was taking pictures and recording via Snapchat the entire time. She also pulled out a gun and Kaden took it from her, aimed and shot Cynthia in the back of the head. According to Kaden, her body was still twitching but the duo pushed her body into the river. It's not clear if she died from the gunshot wound or if she was still alive when they pushed her body into the water. Once again, Denali took out her phone and started recording videos and taking pictures via Snapchat. Denali and Kaden took some of Cynthia's belongings, including her purse, and agreed to burn them. They also attempted to burn the gun. Cynthia planned to meet with her sister later that day, but never showed up. It was unlike her, and that's when her family started to panic. Hours later, Denali would text Cynthia's father in a panic, claiming that she dropped Cynthia off at a park earlier and she hadn't heard from her. She also stated that Cynthia went to go see some boy, but refused to give any additional information. Her family went to the police, but was instructed to come back after 24 hours to report her missing. This section is a trigger warning. Sexual assault and child pornography is mentioned throughout the section. View discretion is advised. Denali met a guy on Snapchat named Tyler who claimed to be a millionaire who lived in Kansas. Denali went by the alias Angel while she was talking to him. The two built up a relationship and would talk frequently, but their conversation quickly turned dark and morbid. They dated for months and as time passed on, the conversations would get darker. Tyler insisted that Denali, aka Angel, should send him pictures and videos of minors in sexual manner. Eventually, it got to the point where he instructed her on how to abuse an 8-year-old and for her to send him pictures and videos. He also instructed her to do the same thing with a 13-year-old, but that wasn't enough to satisfy his fantasies. This time, he wanted her to sexually assault and murder someone and send him the pictures and videos. He told her that if she do it, he would pay her $9 million or more. The two conspired to bring the sick fantasy of life, and she went as far as to recruit a few of her friends to help with the horrific plan. It was agreed that Cynthia would be the target because she was best friends with Denali, and they knew that Cynthia trusted her. It was never disclosed, but I personally feel like her developmental delay probably played a role in the decision as well. But the teens made a pact that they would come up with a cover story to cover their tracks. It wasn't long after Cynthia's disappearance where the police questioned Caden and Denali about what happened that day. Caden quickly told the police that he killed Cynthia and told them about the plan. Denali stated that she was unaware of the plan, but identified Caden as a trigger man. The two were arrested and charged with Cynthia's murder. The police then started to look into the millionaire named Tyler. They soon found out that Tyler was really a 21-year-old named Darren Schillmiller, a man from Indiana who was not a millionaire. Darren had a very disturbing history of catfishing young girls and sending him inappropriate pictures and videos. 
He would even go as far as to messaging parents, asking them to send pictures and videos of them changing their baby's diapers. At one point, Darren was involved in a child pornography investigation, but for some reason the case was dropped. Darren admitted to police that he catfished Angel, aka Denali, and that they were planning for three weeks to sexually assault and murder someone. There was no evidence that Cynthia was sexually assaulted, but Denali did go through with the murder. And at this point, Darren was also arrested and charged with Cynthia's murder. Denali, Kaden, and Darren were all behind bars at this point, but the police also charged Caleb Leland, a teen who lent his car to Denali for a promised payment of $500,000. Caleb admitted that he was aware of the plan and that everyone agreed that Cynthia would be the target. Two other minors were involved, but their information was not made public since they were minors at the time. The juvenile courts are more confidential and I was not able to find their names or their roles, and they're simply listed as Jane and John Doe in the court documents. Now, Caden was a minor as well. He was 16 at the time, but due to his major role in the case, he was charged as an adult. At first, everyone put a plea of not guilty, but eventually they all started taking plea deals and or pleading guilty as time went on. Because the case actually happened during COVID, the cases were constantly delayed. Denali was sentenced to 99 years for first degree murder. She was also sentenced to 30 years for producing child pornography in a separate trial. Darren was sentenced to 99 years for soliciting the murder with the chances of parole after certain 45 years. Now the charges for first and second degree murder and conspiracy to commit first degree murder were all dismissed due to his agreement. Darren has yet to receive his sentence in a role for the child pornography case though. Caden also has not been sentenced and Caleb made a plea agreement where he will be sentenced to a maximum total of 75 years behind bars with 25 years suspended. As stated earlier, I do not know what happened to the minors in the case, but during Denali's trial, she apologized multiple times. Family members stated that Denali had a very rough upbringing and they think that that contributed to her actions. This has been a very disturbing case that I had to research. As soon as I thought like it couldn't get any worse, it did. I feel for Cynthia's family and her real friends. I hope that she's resting in peace and that her father is able to get some peace after hearing some of the sentences so far. It's a wicked world out there, so be careful on who you trust. Rest in peace, Cynthia C.C. Hoffman. Until next time, peace.